The Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch is so iconic, I know, buzz phrase, that when the Speedmaster comes up in conversation, there's often a singular focus on the black dial professional. But the reality is the Speedmaster in the modern era is available in 97 different configurations. That's a lot. While nobody should be faulted for honing in on the professional, the two counters range has become a rock solid sleeper pick for those who want a Speedmaster off the beaten path. And ahead of the Olympic Games, the Omega Chronoscope has stepped into the spotlight with two Paris 2024 editions. Looking at the case, whether in stainless steel or moonshine gold, much of its design remains exactly the same as the professional. The liar lug shape, the alternations of brushed and polished surfaces, they're all just like what you would find on the professional. But whereas the professional is 42 millimeters in diameter, the chronoscope is 43 millimeters in diameter. For some, that might seem like a diameter in the wrong direction, but the chronoscope case does not really wear too much larger. With a lug to lug span of 48.6 millimeters, it is just 1.1 millimeters longer than the professional. A subtle yet welcome trade off, however, is that its 50 meter water resistant case is 0.2 millimeters thinner than the professional at 13 millimeters thick. The standard chronoscope, without the special case back we will touch on later, is actually 12.8 millimeters thick, coming in at 0.4 millimeters thinner. The more you know. The chronoscope's dial and bezel are where you begin to see more visible differences. The black anodized aluminum bezel's tachymeter scale utilizes a different style font, and then turning your attention to the dial, you will notice it utilizes two chronograph counters rather than three. The dial also adds two more scales you can use with your chronograph, a telemeter scale to track the distance between yourself and an audible event such as fireworks, and a pulsation scale to measure heartbeats per minute. The inclusion of these added scales beyond the tachymeter, of course, required more dial real estate to be freed up. That's why in bi-compact style, we have a running seconds counter at nine o'clock and both elapsed hours and minutes neatly nestled within the three o'clock counter. Both Paris 2024 editions share the same dial scheme with opaline dials exhibiting a gradient of silvery white hues and dial contrasting moonshine gold hands and Arabic numerals. And of course a fan favorite, the dial has a panda aesthetic with its counters rendered in black. If you look really close at the ring of Arabic numerals, you will notice a concentric texture runs across the entire perimeter of the hour track, and the outer minutes track is slightly raised above the large central medallion. Another few subtle dial distinctions. The chronoscope is available on either a strap or bracelet, but should you go for the steel version, it's best to purchase it on the bracelet as it is only 300 US dollars more. For the Moonshine Gold variant, it is a different story, where should you purchase it on the strap instead of the case matching precious metal bracelet, you can save 18,400 US dollars. The bracelet is identical to the layout seen on the latest professional models, with a handsome taper and more compact rolled links that have the larger pieces brushed and the narrower pieces mirror polished. The folding clasp, you'll be glad to know, has on the fly micro adjustment where a push and slide mechanism allows for five millimeters of incremental adjustment on the fly. Standard editions of the chronoscope would afford a look at the in-house manually wound Metas coaxial 990A chronograph caliber or the 9909 inside the Moonshine Gold model that simply differs with its gold balance bridge. But for this special Paris 2024 edition, Instead, you have a solid case back that features a sunken frosted surface with the Paris 2024 Olympic logo stamped and polished within. Considering Omega, while industrially performed, finishes its calibers well, some may wish the caliber was instead visible. But those who purchase the Moonshine Gold model will appreciate getting the extra precious metal. Normally, a solid case back would mean a thinner watch, but the three-dimensional aspect of the engraving is likely the culprit. It is, at least, a very handsome engraving, though. The 9908 and 9909, unlike the 3861 and the Speedmaster Professional, offers 10 more hours of power reserve, a total of 60. And it has a column wheel architecture rather than a cam architecture, resulting in crisper actuation of the pushers. And as a vertical clutch rather than a lateral clutch, there is less wear and tear on the chronograph if you leave it running. It should also be noted that the 9908 has a full balance bridge, so it is even more shock resistant than the 3861. Ultimately, while Omega's significant history as an official timekeeper at the Olympic Games is something more than worthy of celebration, the design of these Paris 2024 editions keeps the Olympic tie-in very subtle. 
there's not necessarily any huge reason to purchase these editions over the standard versions. But if you appreciate the tie-in, or simply the sleek opaline dial scheme, these chronoscopes, or any chronoscopes for that matter, are a worthwhile tangent to explore before purchasing a Speedmaster Professional, especially with its upgraded movement and its added scales. What do you think of the chronoscope? Do you prefer it over the Professional? Or as the icon, does the Professional remain the first place segment of the sizable Speedmaster range? Let us know in the comments below. The Omega Chronoscope Paris 2024 editions are available now. The steel variant is priced at $9,500 US dollars on a strap and $9,800 US dollars on the bracelet. For the Moonshine Gold variants, the price is set at $32,700 US dollars on a strap and $51,400 US dollars on the bracelet. So, do you want to know what would get you a Olympic gold medal in Time and Tides book? If you hit that subscribe button, it would mean the world. And if you do, you'll be updated with all the latest watch news, reviews, and content. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.